Hi, everybody. It's 12 o'clock. And with this new system, I tell you, I feel excited because it's a new system, new touching. There's a bit of a delay. So I know I'm speaking now and you're hearing me only about three seconds later. But we've tested this and we've trialed this and it's working perfectly. So I trust every one of you are in a great space where you're sitting. And welcome to the new people. There's people to join from Australia, people from England. And um, I would like to say to you, I value this time, this half an hour incredibly. So welcome to this. There's a couple of agreements that I have to make and I have to set that out every day. It's going to be repetition. You're going to get used to this. But the more you hear it, hear it the more you're going to do it. It's going to be easy. Number one, this is not a forum where I'm going to predict what's going to happen. I'm not going to give political views. I'm not going to discuss what, what I think about the future, etc. This is a mental toughness forum. It's all about you. It's about the way we think. Because as you think, you are. Now, we've got, learned from childhood to be spectators of life. Um, that means we stand at the side, we watch other people, and we usually um, judge people, and we look at people, and we learn to be outsiders. We never very rarely in the arena. And when we're in the arena, we feel so pressurized because we think everybody else is looking at us. Well, if you're really in the arena, you're not going to worry, be worried about who's looking at you. You're going to be focused on what you should do. And that's the way we should live. It's not worrying about what people are thinking about us, but we should be focusing on what we should do with life. So for this sessions, for these sessions, I would suggest you, you're welcome to do whatever you want. I would suggest to have a notebook and a pen. And when I say something, when something hits you between the eyes, make a note. Because after the session, you're going to do one of the most important things about being in the arena. And that means that you're going to share your thinking. You're going to share your learning. You're, you're going to share your understanding with the other people in your home. I can't tell you about the amazing feedback. One family, they sent me an email and they said, for us, the feedback from the children to dad in the afternoon when he comes home is the most exciting time of the day because suddenly my children felt the responsibility of getting them, their father to know how they think. And, and the synergy that has been created was incredible just because of this. Where I have to say, and this is the important part, you don't take notes in the third person. That means you're not a spectator watching and listening to what I say and say, uh, we shoot, a person shoot, you shoot. The word you, uh, people or whatever, doesn't really come into your notes. It should always be I or your name. Now, this morning when I had my quiet time, I did exactly that. And it's incredible. When you, we, when you write down, I write down the verse that I find in the word. And I put my name in that verse. So I'm not, I'm not writing the verse at its stand in the Bible. I'm writing my name in that verse. And then when I'm finished, I read that which I've written down out loud. And something happens in me because suddenly it's me in the arena. It's not me looking at God's word or at the word. And then I, I, I hear it. It's totally different. I trust everyone if you've got a pen and paper. And it's for the kids as well. Because after the session, you as a family, you as two people, maybe you as one person sitting there, you're going to speak to yourself because you've got to learn to speak what's in your heart and what you've heard. Because through speaking, stuff happens. Not through thinking. It is a mental toughness forum, let me tell you. Speaking makes all the difference in life. And the choice of what you say, that's where this forum is really focused on. What do you choose to say? You can choose to think anything, but what you choose to say is the difference. So everybody got a notebook. After which you're going to speak to each other. And I do want to do this today 
although it was an Afrikaans uh, boy who sent me a WhatsApp last week, we spoke about fear. We're going to speak about different top uh, subjects uh, regarding our thinking. But I, I'm going to ask his, his permission first. But I got this most amazing feedback of this young boy who, after we spoke about fear, where you've got to learn to, to confront your fear. That means you jump on the fire, not literally, but after you've gotten advice from a firefighter or somebody who's an expert in killing fires, and you jump on the fire and you smother it. That's how you kill a fear. You confront it. Where this boy developed a fear after he got hurt terribly. And how he, from that session, decided, I'm going to master this fear. And he sent me a video and I get goosebumps. Uh, my body simply just reacts in that way. The more I speak, the more I have the privilege of speaking like this, the more the energy in me. I can't tell you how good I play in the afternoon when me and my wife play the golf course here after I have these sessions because my whole body, my whole being is in a, in a, in a state of excellence. It's just thrilling. It really happens to me. Yes, for those of you who wonder what I'm speaking about, in the first day that we started with this timeout, uh, the world called it lockdown. I call it time. We used to call it time out for the first week. After a week, we had enough time out. We had enough time to watch what's going to happen. And then we realized now it's in time. Um, what I'm speaking to you is all things about thinking, all things of your mindset. Are you in lockdown? Are you in time out? Or are you in time? We are in time right this moment. Now, I'm going to start today by introducing my way of thinking. Because as we grow up, we learn to think. And so often we get to a place in life where your thinking was not beneficial to your future. Some of you know me, many of you don't. I grew up in a magnificent family. My father was a professor at university. I'm not going to make this long. I just want to give you a, think, a, a part of my thinking. I come from an incredible family. I'm the third of four children. The firstborn is usually the perfect child. I'm not the perfect child. The perfect child needs to be watched because he can be very critical on himself. We'll speak about that later. But the firstborn is usually perfect, never makes mistakes. And some of you might have a, a laugh there because the, the firstborn child is usually a perfectionist as well, which you don't want to be, promise you. You would like to be excellent, but not a perfectionist. There's two different things about that. But we'll speak about that because it's incredibly important about your experience of life. I was a third-born child, so I was okay with myself. I didn't worry about being first or last. I just enjoyed life. Um, I was a naughty little boy. We grew up very religiously, so religion was part of our makeup. Religion means going to church. Now, I'm not a religious person because religion, to me personally, it's not a rule. It's not a, to me personally, religion means rules. It means the frame in which people put you how you should believe. Religion was great. It taught me that there's a God, although I missed him 180 degrees. I didn't know about him. I, oh, I didn't know him. I know about him. I knew about him, but I didn't know him. So church to me was not a pleasant experience. I was sitting there and it was very boring, to be honest. Um, the pastor preached in a monotonous tone and he was angry all the time. And everybody else in the church was um, a little bit angry, as I thought so. Everybody was angry because you couldn't. You couldn't smile, you couldn't laugh, you couldn't make a joke. You, you were supposed to sit still and you're not supposed to sleep. So my experience of God was fear him, but for the wrong reasons, because I was a sinner. I was a sinner. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I was just normal, but I learned that I'm a sinner. So I felt this guilt all the time. Um, although I, just, I was just a normal boy. Um, most of you know what I'm speaking about. Um, just before I went to high school, 
Um, my mother came to me and she said to me, she and my father getting divorced. My father was my hero from childhood. He still is my hero. He's an amazing guy. Um, I love him. And the fact that they got divorced was because my father stepped into a trap that's set for anybody. Now, do not judge anybody who steps into a trap. And I don't want to speak about other people because then I expose other people. So I'm not going to speak about what happened. I'm not going to speak about what happened to my home, but my home became a nightmare. Uh, my, my parents got divorced. My father left us. Um, many things happened, and I became a monster. I would rather speak about myself because I would rather expose myself so that if you want to judge somebody, you can judge me. I'm okay with that because I don't stand under the judgment of people. Um, I'm okay with my place where I'm, I'm, I'm with God, and I'm getting better every day. I used to doubt the existence of God terribly. Uh, to me, church was a fake. Everybody in church knew what was going on in our home, and everybody just turned their faces. So it was embarrassing, and that embarrassment was only to be overcome by my physicality, and my physicality became my identity. I trained a lot. I became tough. I became a rugby player. I was mean. I didn't get injured because I trained extremely hard, and I was extremely fit. I'm not the biggest. I'm big enough, but I was definitely not big enough for people's opinion. But I'm big enough, but in many people's opinion, I was too small. But I was tough. Tougher than you thought I was, and that, therefore the doors of rugby opened up for me. I uh, could study for free at the university, so I studied for nine years at the Pochestrum University, and um, I became the captain of the university's rugby team. I played provincial rugby for a number of years, and rugby became my identity because my embarrassment of what was happening at home could only be covered by fake identity. A fake identity means what the world thinks is important. So I developed a fake identity. People develop a fake identity through their beauty. I mean, you can have this beautiful woman walking up here, and I always say when somebody walks in here, I say, I, I, I would say, you are, or you've got beautiful legs. I would literally tell the people what I see because they're so consciously aware that that is what creates their identity. And I expose it, and therefore, it doesn't stand between us anymore. We can connect. Um, so many of us develop identities in different things. Your money might become your identity, your status, your fame, um, your position in the church. You, uh, so many people develop a fake identity, and so often we don't ever know ourselves. So I got to a place where I was lost. Everybody else was happy, except me. And um, when I went to high school, my father was not present in my home anymore. My mother was living her identity or lack of identity in that stage uh, because she lost everything. Um, so alcohol became part of our own, own environment. Um, I, I had a terrible relationship with my parents for many, many years. And I went into rebellion and I made the wrong friends. And um, I'm not going to tell a long story. I got addicted to pornography. I was introduced to pornography at high school. I never grew up with talks about that. I didn't know what it is. I didn't know what sex was. And in high school, when I got there in Afrikaans, we, I heard the guys, you know, I, I know there's a couple of children there. So I'm going to be careful with my words here. But um, we, they spoke about what they did with the girls, and I was curious as to what are they speaking about. And I realized it was something that I'm not supposed to, was to know. But eventually, the, we had a, a rugby team talk, a team, and I was playing for the first rugby team, and there was no teacher present. And uh, one guy took out this video, and it was a porn movie, and I was so excited. I'm going to see what sex is. And, and I was sitting there and just hoping that the guys don't think I'm too young and they chase me out. And when that film started showing, I was shocked into my seventh sense. Um, we only have six senses, but I developed the seventh one there. And I was shocked into that one because what I saw was vulgar and, and embarrassing. And after about three minutes, one of my friends said, let's walk out. 
So we walked out, they ridiculed us. And in my mind, I was this loser. Now you've got to understand, I'm describing to you my mindset, the way I grew up, thinking there's a God, being disappointed in him, trusting people, being let down. My father left us for another woman. That's a big let down in terms of trust. My mother left us for a safety place. That's a big let down. Many of us are let down in life. Now, I want to say this. The moment you become a victim of life, it will be impossible for you to have victory. Because victim is the opposite of victory. Many people who call themselves Christians grow up from childhood with a victim mentality. I'm so good. I do so well. I'm the perfect guy. I never sin. I don't smoke. I don't cheat. I don't, I don't tell filthy jokes, whatever. And therefore, I should be blessed. I should be rich. I should be beautiful. But I'm fat. I don't have money. I don't look good. We, we poor. And you become a victim of life. If you're a victim of life, you can never experience the victory <laughs> that's available to us all. And I promise you, that's where I found myself at the age of 30. At the age of 30, I was a victim of life. I was addicted to pornography. I cheated on my wife. I, I screwed through nine years at university um, because that's the door that opened up for me. And I'm saying this to you. You can judge me if you want to. I am free. Because at the age of 30, somebody came and spoke into my life. And when that guy started speaking out, we were, got, we were invited to a talk, a motivational speaker. Um, many of you might think, ah, oh, motivational talk. I, I don't want to do a motivational talk. This mental toughness forum is not a motivational talk. It's setting your mind. It's for you to decide how you want to think. It's not listening to me. You've got to write down there, I used to be a victim, ends today. That's what you can write down. Because if you hear me speak and you think, oh, I think just like you thought, Yanni, you can write down, I used to be a victim, but it ends today. And I'm going to learn that from now on. Because when you speak to somebody else after the session and you reveal what you used to think, that thought will lose its power. That means you expose the evil one for who he is. And that's the accuser. And he accuses all of us. Whilst, um, for those of you who believe in God, and I want to make this clear, this is not a religious forum. This is a mental toughness forum. You can believe whatever you want, but let me promise you, whatever you believe, you will prove to be true. And I want to say this, if you don't believe there's a God, you are right. There is no God for you. Because God can only exist if you believe in him. That's his word. His word says, if you have faith, you can. So if you don't believe he is, your life will simply be a demonstration, an example of what a life without God is like. I've seen many of those people. And good luck, because you would like to find some value in many things of this world, but you will never find the true value. I don't know whether you read the last or had that video clip. It's there. So many video clips being sent out about people and, and great video clips about Steve Jobs. Try and find him. Steve Jobs' last words before he died at the age of 56, I think. He was the founder of Apple, where he revealed how he had everything people dreamt of. More money than he can ever use. But what is true life? What is true life? And to me, true life is to know that I live for one reason, and that's one reason only. And that's if you look at me, you have to think, wow, I want what Yanni has. And what do I have? I sit on God's lap every morning. I hear his voice clearly. I'm obedient when he speaks, and I have the courage to jump when he tells me to jump. 
I have the courage to sit and speak to you right here, right now, and to reveal myself because I want to be obedient. Because if this is my last day and I arrive in heaven, and I do believe I will get to heaven, what it looks like, I've got no idea. I can predict and I can listen to other people, but I don't, I've got no idea. But my picture of my end is this. When I go up these stairs, I'll come to these big doors, huge doors, and be quiet. I want to push to open this door because I know I've got to go through. I will push it, uh, and just before I touch the door, it will open by itself. And the most beautiful sound will come from behind it. It will fill me like no sound of earth has ever filled me. And I, I tell you, every morning we do this. We listen to a, a beautiful song. Um, I want to keep my time in, in place because I've got to challenge you. But today is the introduction. Today is not the mental session. It's simply for you to think, what do you think about yourself? What is your goal in life? So I want to enter those doors. And in my curiosity spirit, I would like to look, peep around this door. And when I peep around this door, this bright light, it won't hurt my eyes, but I, I will just, I won't see. And then I want to hear this voice coming to me and saying, Peterki, come here. And I am going to run and I'm going to jump, even though I jump into this light, because I know I'm going to land on God's lap. And he's going to take me like this and he's going to hug me because that's I'm a physical person. I love hugging. I love physical touch. Um, you don't know it, but my wife sits here next to me and she's my energy at this moment, a lot of energy, and I touch her. And I am God, God is going to fondle me. He's going to touch me and he's going to just give me hugs. And he's going to say to me, Karayani, I'm so glad you're here with me. Because while you were on earth, you really kept me busy. I had to send out so many angels every day because of your faith in me. And I'm righteous and I'm true and I've never disappointed you, which I I thought God left me. I prayed a lot. In those days, I can remember I was standing in the field in the opposite of uh, yard, and I was praying and, I, and I, I literally was mad at God. But the amazing thing is never a word never left my mouth because my prayer was always in my mind. And let me tell you, if you pray in your mind, you're not praying, you're thinking. You can think whatever you want. It doesn't change your life. The moment you speak, something happens. So don't pray thinking. Pray speaking and see what happens. It's a total different experience. At the age of 30, we were invited to go and listen to a motivational speaker. I didn't have the money. We were extremely poor. I had a victim mindset and I was getting divorced. My, my marriage was falling apart. But that weekend changed my life forever because I sat there and when that guy started speaking, I know God's spirit spoke to him, through him, right to me. And I couldn't stop listening and I took notes. I took them wrongly because I said, you should, you should. And afterwards, I realized what incredible difference it made when I put my name in there. It will be, it would, would have saved that time lapse where I had to create my mind getting into the arena from being a spectator in life. That would have saved me. But that weekend was incredible because the Sunday morning, he made an invitation. He said, all of you close your eyes. So we closed our eyes and we sat there. And he said, if you sit here today and you know you're a victim, you know you're a hypocrite. You know you're a fake. You sit in church every Sunday. You're a great pretender. Everybody thinks the world of you. But you know you're not going anywhere because you're lost. And you want to be saved. And you want to get off the throne of your own life and give authority off to God. Put up your hand. Now, I sat there and my heart went like this because I knew that's me. And I was so afraid to put up my hand. 
But after a couple of minutes, I realized I peaked. I cheated. I peaked. You can judge me, but I peaked because I was afraid. And I saw that many people had more guts than me. They put up their hands. And I thought to myself, when am I going to do this? How will I get the guts? And I said, I know I'm going to cry. Don't ever cry, but I will. Okay, they're crying, so I'm going to put up my hand. Maybe I cry. I put up my hand, snort and tran, and I cried. And um, I walked to the front. And for the per first time, I prayed a prayer out loud, which was not a rhyme, not the answer father. Not see and father, but it was a prayer that that guy said, and I simply followed it. And I decided, I asked God to come into my life. Something changed inside of me, nothing hit me. I was expecting something to hit me, but nothing hit me. But I walked back to my wife and I said to her, she looked at me with big eyes and when we got back, um, our friends dropped us, they picked us up, they paid for our tickets. We didn't do it ourselves. Somebody brought me. But we decided we're going to make an agreement. I asked her, can we try? And we started that Monday morning. For today, I want to say this to you. You sitting there, you're part of the most important team of your life. It's your family. Are you standing in agreement as to going forward or are you everyone on your own mesuip? Proving a point, fighting against each other. My time is up today. I didn't plan for this, but it happened. And I, I can't share the next two weeks with you unless you know my heart. Um, I got saved. Me and my wife started with an agreement. We will make it. Then we learned what to do. We started doing that. It changed our life, not like this, but day by day. The other last week, I said to the people, how do you lose your marriage? How do you lose a relationship with your child? It doesn't happen in an instant. Yes, there might be an incident that eventually that's the burst of that's the explosion. But you don't lose a relationship. You don't lose your health. You don't lose your marriage. You don't lose your mind. The answer is day by day. That's why we do this every day for the next two weeks. I'm looking forward to sharing time with you. Tomorrow we will really start with the mindset and then the agreement with the family. But for today, I trust that some of you made some notes. Thank you for the time spending it with me. When we finish now, when we lock down or lock out, you ask the people around you to say, what have I learned today? And you've got to read that. And that's my challenge for you today. Tomorrow I'm going to have a far better challenge because I haven't spoken about team today. We'll get to that tomorrow. And one of my friends said, I'm not going to be rushed through these things because when you're rushed, you miss the most important point. Challenge for today is learn to share what you've learned today and share it in the first person. Be in the arena, share it with the people around you. And if you've got the courage and the guts, Tell them what you're going to do with what you just learned. Commit yourself to something. And tomorrow, we will start with the true challenge because families are going to be like this. It's fun, funny, and exciting. And everybody in the family is going to get a, ch a chance to be in charge. That's going to be the challenge for tomorrow. So looking forward to chatting to you. Have a super day. Be blessed. And remember, as you think, I am free. I can do anything. The power of God in me. I have freedom of choice and I choose to speak words of life. Doesn't matter whether the world calls this lockdown. To me, we are in real time. And I live every moment to the fullest. Have a super day. Speak to you tomorrow.